an assailant came into the parking lot of the Uhura House at 951 on Saturday and proceeded to use a flamethrower to destroy this African flag. Uh, this kind of brazen uh, white nationalist attempt to intimidate the African community uh, will not work. Uh, we will still continue to fight against colonialism because that's what this is, a cap colonial capitalist attack from what we assume to be a civilian. Uh, however, uh, many groups out there in the world are now connected to the state in a way as, as extraordinary extensions of the colonial state to carry out violence against African people. So we're very happy today to be able to have some outstanding speakers who will speak on this issue. Uh, first, we will have Director Akile Anai who is the Director of Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party. She will be speaking first. And then we will have Jamie Simpson, who is a member of the Uhura Solidarity Committee, a white organization that organizes behind enemy lines in the white community under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. And then we will have Dexter M. Wingo, who is the International People's Democratic Uhura Movement St. Petersburg organizer. So with no further ado, I want to introduce Director Akile Anai of the African People's Socialist Party. She's the Director of Agitation and Propaganda. Uhuru, as mentioned, my name is Akile Anai, and I'm the Director of the Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party. We are having this press conference on today, July 4th which represents what's characterized as Independence Day for the colonizer population, which formally established the U.S. as a separate settler colonialist state on stolen land of the indigenous people using the stolen enslaved labor of Africans brought here in chains. This point bears significance because of the nature of the attack that our party came under on Saturday, July 2nd, where an unknown individual came into the parking lot of our Uhuru house and proceeded to burn our towering red, black, and green African national flag with a military-grade flamethrower. The basis of this attack is clear. The RBG flag is a clear response to the red, white, and blue that has come to represent the settler colony known as the United States of America. It's a response from African workers domestically colonized within U.S. borders that we constitute our own colonially dispersed African nation, which is in the process of cons consolidating itself, bringing about an existential threat to the U.S. and all other colonial powers of the world who benefit from the separation of African people to maintain the colonial mode of production. This social system, born of slavery and colonialism, birthed a capitalist economic configuration of the world defined as the colonial mode of production by Chairman Omalia Shetela, the leader and founder of the party and Uhuru movement. This mode of production is in a state of disrepair. The power of the U.S. is being challenged by Russia, China, and increasingly the anti-colonial struggles heating up throughout the so-called Americas, in Africa, and elsewhere. The time is up for the global reign of the U.S. empire, and it knows this. In fact, anyone ardently celebrating this colonial holiday is in a state of denial or sheer panic over the uncertainty of the future for U.S. imperialism. This fear, this roiling anxiety among the colonizer population manifests itself in the type of white nationalist violence we witnessed in Buffalo, New York with the killing of 10 black people in a supermarket. It's also the basis for the type of assault we've come under with the burning of our flag. And we're clear this was a targeted, ideologically informed attack. Our party, which was founded in 1972 by Chairman Amalia Shetela, is recognized as the political leadership of the black community with the explicit goal for black power and self-determination. Our mission is to seize power over our own lives and the means of production in our own interests. No one else has taken on this task in this city or elsewhere since the military defeat of the black power movement of the 1960s. No one in this city was, has managed to do what our party has, despite the countless attempts from the state to roadblock our work and discredit us in our own community. Our Uhuru House has been a longtime community center for meetings, 
events, office space for our organizers, and is home to our other economic development institutions such as the Uhuru Jiko Commercial Kitchen, Uhuru Pies, and within the last five years, Black Power 96 Radio. It is connected to a list of over 50 economic institutions produced by our movement throughout the world. Attacking this building has been a strategy of this system. In 1996, our building came under military assault from the St. Pete City government and its police. Following the murder of 18-year-old Tyron Lewis, they used every ounce of tear gas in this city, attempting to set this building on fire, attempting to assassinate our leaders by trapping them and members of our movement and members of this community while we conducted our regular community meeting. The community came out in droves and defeated the police, causing them to withdraw from the struggle. Our connection to this community was clear on Saturday when someone tried to prevent the arsonist from escaping the parking lot or when people learned of what occurred and came here to check on the well-being of the leadership. This building has the security of this community, which is what this individual or organization responsible for this attack did not anticipate. The police have told the media without notifying us that the person responsible is an African. That still remains unclear to us, whether or not this means they've been able to put a name and face together. This, this would be anyone's assumption, but this is not the case. If so, they are withholding that information. They also stated they can't consider this case of, consider this a case of arson and have reduced it to criminal mischief. This should show clearly the state's complicity in this assault. I want to state clearly that regardless of who is responsible, the nationality of who is responsible, the crisis of this social system is felt by both the colonizer and colonized populations. I mentioned Buffalo, New York as one example, and I can also reference Uvalde, Texas, where the gunman was a colonized Mexican. The colonized population has always been weaponized against our own community, consciously or unconsciously. So this does not change the nature of this attack or the basis of it. The fact is anyone who identifies their future with the fate of U.S. imperialism is suffering the greatest anxiety attack in history. We're calling on our community to reject the future of this dying social system and embrace that which comes with black people capturing power over our own lives. We also call on the community, paraphrasing Mao Zedong, to rejoice when our enemies attack you. It is a statement of the success of our party and movement who is bringing this social system to its knees. We are winning. Uhuru. Thank you, Director Akile. So we want to bring up Jamie Simpson from the Uhuru Solidarity Movement to make a statement. Uhuru. Thank you, Director Chimarenga. My name is Jamie Simpson. I am the St. Petersburg Chair of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And on behalf of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, I want to say we are appalled by this cowardly act of colonial terror. And uh, we stand in absolute solidarity and defense of the Uhuru House, the Uhuru Movement, and the African People's Socialist Party. And I I'd just like to also say that we recognize, as Director Akile just stated, that somebody didn't come to this building with a military grade flamethrower and uh, torch this flag because uh, colonialism is strong and the African People's Socialist Party and the African Revolution is weak. Quite the contrary. They carried out this cowardly act of terror because they recognize colonialism is weak, is on weaker ground than ever, and the African Revolution is stronger than ever. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement is an organization of mostly white people that was created 46 years ago by the African People's Socialist Party and its chairman, Omalia Shetela, whom we uh, salute for leading the African Revolution for over 50 years and for coming up with the brilliant strategy of the Solidarity Movement, which shatters the white community's unity with its own ruling class by calling on us in the white community to unite with the revolutionary leadership of the African working class to struggle for reparations and a, a revolution that is a revolutionary demand reparations that represents the only legitimate thing that this system can do to take a step toward justice for African people. And it is the basis of our unity with the African community, as well as the only way that we can reclaim our humanity. 
We call on the white community to abandon our traditional role as colonizers, as the lynch mob, and as various types of agents of our own ruling class who have historically, enthusiastically carried out that ruling class's bidding and uh, the, the most heinous acts of colonial violence and terror against African people to protect our own positions in this colonial system. We call on the white community. We call on you to support reparations and liberation for African people and to recognize the significance of this organization, recognize the significance of the African international flag that was attacked this weekend. Recognize the significance of the Uhuru movement, the African People's Socialist Party, as the organization that is leading the way out of this colonial nightmare and toward a future of genuine freedom and social justice that can be and should be our own future if we are willing to accept our responsibility to struggle against this system of violence and oppression and to help build unity through reparations. So July 4th is allegedly Independence Day in the United States. Uh, but what this holiday really celebrates is a colonial mode of production that is based on slavery and genocide. And that colonial mode of production, as Chairman Omalia Shatala defines it, that system is in profound crisis. So much so that someone came to this building, torched this beautiful African flag that flies above this community, community providing a real sense of pride and hope for the, the people here, and did so in a, a desperate and depraved attempt to defend colonial capitalism and to try and terrorize African people out of building a new world of self-determination, but they failed. No one can stop the African working class from organizing in their own interests to free themselves. As Director Akile said, there is great anxiety and an existential crisis in this system, and in the gen general white population, that anxiety is in response to the growing resistance of African and other colonized peoples throughout the world. But that anxiety does not have to be ours if we stop identifying with this oppressive and parasitic system and embrace instead the optimism of the African revolution as our own. This uh, crisis of imperialism, this anxiety of this system manifests itself in the colonizer population, that's us in the white community, or it's expected to be us, it also expresses itself in the colonized population, but it always comes as a consequence of identifying with a colonial system that is doomed. And by refusing to embrace the future of genuine revolution and freedom offered by the African revolution. So the city of St. Petersburg loves to tout itself as a progressive city, but the fact that someone can brazenly in broad daylight attack the only institution that represents the African working class's real interests, exposes this progressive city narrative for the lie that it is. And this lie is further exposed by the fact that the St. Pete Police Department, the city of St. Petersburg has refused to call this act what it was, an act of arson and of terrorism. And to call it this criminal mischief slap on the wrist is a sign of the complicity of this city, but we don't expect this system to offer justice for African people or protect the African community when the uh, purpose of this colonial system of, of police in this country is to subjugate, oppress African people. But the reality is African people are done being victims of this system. African people represent the future of this world and we call on white people in this city and throughout the world to stand by the Uhuru movement, stand by the Uhuru house, defend this building, this institution, and everything it represents, support an end to gentrification in this city and throughout the world, support an end to police murders, oppose colonial acts of terror against the African community, and support reparations to African people. If you hear this message, if you're a white person who unites with the black community, I call on you to join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. Come out to our event that is calling on the white community to defend this movement and support reparations. That's on Saturday, July 23rd at 4 p.m. at the Body Electric Yoga in St. Petersburg. For more information, you can contact us at stpete.uhurusolidarity.org. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie.
Uhuru. I want to preach that, Director Timaranga. And uh, I want to really appreciate the statements made by, uh, by Comrade Jamie Simpson, Simpson and uh, Director Akile Anai. Um, as was mentioned, my name is Dexter Mlamwingu. I am the, uh, the local chair of the African People's Socialist Party, as well as an organizer with the uh, International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. And uh, the first thing I really wanted to do today was uh, salute the African community. Uh, I want to salute the members of the African community who have supported the Uhuru Movement and these institutions in, in the wake of what could only be called a colonial attack. In the immediate wake of the attack, uh, when Black Power 96 station manager, Eddie Mosby, was sitting right here in the front row, when he made the announcement over the radio, we had African people, uh, one after the other, coming to the Uhuru House, making sure that the leadership of the African working class community was safe, making sure that these institutions uh, uh, were intact. And uh, I know, we had, as was mentioned before, we had somebody in particular who you saw this attack happen and saw it unfolding right in front of him, saw this big flamethrower being used to toss his flag, and with no absolutely no regard uh, to his own safety. He threw himself in between, uh, in the line of fire, threw himself between this attacker and his route of escape. And I really wanted us to commend the African committee and the support uh, we, we've had in the wake of this whole thing. Uh, Cause that right there really, it really represented the, uh, the willingness of the African working class community to fight for these institutions that serve the community and just defend them tooth and nail. Uh, and you know, this isn't the first time that uh, we've demonstrated this ability to defend our own institutions, to defend this movement. Uh, I think it was touched on before, but uh, in October 1996, when the police had decided to destroy this place, it was the African community who pushed them back. It wasn't one person, it wasn't two people, but it was an organized African community that mounted a defense that was so powerful, it, it, it pushed back every, every cop, every gun they had, every helicopter they had at their disposal, every tank. It sent them all back running with their tail between their legs. And that's a real uh, testament to the power that comes with an organized uh, African community. You know, we are really our own defenders. So we can't, you know, we can't look uh, to the police to defend the African community. You know, as we said before, they look at a high grade, a high grade military flamethrower being used to torch this place down. And they won't even call it arson. They call it a criminal mischief. Like we're talking about uh, graffiti or, or someone jaywalking or something like that. You know, so we got to understand that the, uh, the ultimate defense of the African community, the only genuine, true defense of the African community will be the African community. You know, we're our own defenders, but we got to get organized. We got to defend our people. We got to defend these institutions that serve the people. And we got to understand that an organized African community will, will make it impossible for anybody, to any foreigner, any, any intruder, to come into this community with high-grade weaponry and, and, and wreak any kind of havoc, wreak any kind of destruction in our community. But the only way we'll be able to do that is if we get organized. So I really want to call on everyone to join and support the Uhura movement and be part of mounting this defense of the African community. I also want to call on everyone to attend our upcoming community meeting. It'll be right here, July 9th, 2022 at 4 p.m. We'll be discussing the way forward uh, around this matter. We'll be discussing this forward more as well as different uh, other issues that are currently impacting the African community. So I just wanted to say that and say again that we are our own defenders and we have to get organized. Uh -huh. Good. Appreciate that, Chair Dexter. So <clears throat> I just want to make it clear that uh, in the context of what these speakers have said, particularly Director Akile, uh, we are carrying out our own investigation from the African People's Socialist Party. Uh, and I suspect that's the only real investigation that's uh, being carried out at the moment. So uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, we haven't identified uh, a suspect yet, but uh, that's what we're working on. Uh, we are speculating, which I think is pretty good speculation about the motivation. Clearly it was politically motivated, a very ideological kind of attack. So. Uh, I just want to reiterate that the attack was actually interrupted. So we don't know uh, what the suspect was going to carry out after he burned the flag. Uh, when you got a flamethrower, you can go a lot of places with that. So uh, with no further ado, I want to open up the, the press conference for questions. Uh, if y'all can just stand up right behind me and you can direct your question to the person you want to ask the question of. So. I'm gonna open it up to the media, and then uh, maybe the audience might wanna have some questions as well.
Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, the suspect entered through the south entrance parking lot. He parked in that space directly behind you. He got out. He sat in the car, as a matter of fact, for six or seven minutes mm -hmm. before he got out, went to his trunk. He got the, the flamethrower out, put it on his back, and then went to the flag and started shooting the, the gas. Upon seeing that, uh, one of the neighbors, I want to identify him at the moment uh, because the investigation is still open, mm -hmm. but he did attempt to block that exit. Yeah. Uh, he thought better of it because he, he thought he might get hit. So he did come around, come through the west, try to get behind him. And by the time he got, I mean, he was tearing through the parking lot trying to get behind him. He took off and went east on 18th Avenue. So that, that's as much as we're able to say about it at the moment. Uh, we did get a statement from him, but uh, we don't want to go any further into it right now. Any other questions for any of the speakers? Any questions from the audience? Well, that's a really good question. Um, we're very cognizant even before this happened uh, that our movement, the African world, is under assault under colonial capitalist system. So we were very clear that something has to be done. We saw the 10 people that got killed in Buffalo. We've seen uh, George Floyd be murdered on video. So we're pretty clear that something has to be done we don't think it's um, a discussion for public consumption at the moment, uh, but discussions are being held about what kind of response is going to be. I do believe, in answer to the other part of your question, I do believe that uh, because this was an interrupted attack, it's possible that the attacker would come and try to finish what they started. So. We're, we're quite aware of that. So we're, we're making preparations for that. Any other questions? You had another question? Okay. Director Keeley, did you have any closing remarks? Um, so first, I just want to express appreciation to the, the speakers behind me, the members and organizers of this movement. I also want to thank everybody who came out um, either to support as well as the media to cover this. And I also want to really um, just join with Dexter and salute this community, which has time and time again shown that it is committed to protecting this institution. When we talk about you know, retaliation and, and things of that nature, what we can expect from that person, what they can expect is the support and the security coming from this community, where we've seen it happen before, where 300 police officers from St. Petersburg to other uh, neighboring districts descended on this community, uh, community using every type of, uh, of military defense that they had from helicopters to guns to, um, to, to, to tear gas, everything that they used. And this community rose up and pushed them back and had them calling, pull back the troops, we are under heavy fire. So that's what they, you know, this person, this organization who committed this assault on our movement and anybody who attacks this organization that represents the political and ideological leadership of the African working class community, this is what they can expect. We are organized. We are organized all throughout the world. We are not just in St. Petersburg, Florida. We are an international organization of African revolutionaries. So when you touch St. Petersburg, you touch St. Louis, Missouri, you touch Oakland, California, you touch South Africa, called Occupy Azania, this is all the places in which our 
um, receiving the, under, uh, the message of what's been happening here. That's what happened when they attacked this movement. They attacked an international organization. The situation of the 1960s is different. Our movement is ideologically, ideologically informed by African internationalism, which is the theory that de was developed by Chairman Amalia Shetela. So the situation of the 60s is different from what we are experiencing now. The African Revolution and the party of the African working class is here, and it is organized, and it is prepared to take this struggle to the end to destroy this colonial capitalist system, the colonial mode of production, once and for all, and ensure a future where nobody lives at the expense of anyone. Nobody has to be oppressed under a social system where the value of our labor, the production and reproduction of our lives and resources can be possessed in the hands of African laborers ourselves. That's the future that we are going to accomplish. That's the future that the U.S. empire and all colonial powers are afraid of, which is why this has occurred today. So we call on you to support this future, become a member of this organization, support this organization, and donate to help us get another flag to, uh, to say to anyone that attempts to attack this movement that they can't do anything. None of their attacks, none of their scare tactics, none of the jailings, none of the assassinations will work this time around. We will complete the black revolution of the 1960s. Uhuru. Thank you, Director Akile. I want to thank the media <clears throat> and all our supporters for coming out today. Uh, this is the end of the press conference. Uh, if the media wants to do any interviews after the press conference, we will be available for a few minutes to do that. Uhuru.